ladies and gentlemen we finally have more information about the new commander that was revealed during the sixth anniversary live stream and this commander is none other than Ra ragnar yeah this is ragnar but it but but it is ragnar s P, which players are suspecting means super prime i know today we're going to go over everything that we know and a lot of this information is translated from chinese i expect that the english version of all this information will come very soon but i wanted to make this video as soon as i could as soon as i learned everything so today that's what we're going to go over but first what's going on guys cheers so i woke up this morning and people on discord messaged me pictures of what appeared to be an in-person event for the sixth anniversary of rise of king Kingdoms. and as you can see here we actually have the producer of rise of kingdoms presenting this information now again i suspect that this was taking place somewhere in china at an official player meetup and since the producer of rise of kingdoms himself is revealing this information i think that this counts as public information from an official source so we're going to talk about it today however i do want to give a huge shout out to ihara of course i've given tons of shout outs to ihara before ihara is another rise of kingdoms youtuber that happens to know chinese and was able Able to present this information and translate it for us and so a lot of what we're going to talk about in today's video i actually learned from them so what i'm going to do is actually link their entire video down below ihara goes into depth more about the new kvk and a couple of other things that you might be interested in that i'm not going to cover here in this video mainly because i want you to go over and support their channel so please go ahead subscribe to ihara drop a thumbs up on their video and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on this video as well but with all of that out of the way let's talk about sp ragnar this is something we have never seen in rise of kingdoms before now we all know that prime commanders exist right but one of the things about prime commanders is that it essentially takes an epic commander and makes them legendary but if you guys have played rise of kingdoms for any amount of time you know that ragnar came into the game as a legendary and so when people said that this new commander was going to be ragnar prime it's like that doesn't make any sense because he's already legendary and the developers of rise of kingdom said hold my beer we have super prime so this i mean we don't actually know what the s stands for here but we know that of course in rise of kingdoms all of the prime commanders have a little p next to their actual avatar frame over here um and so what we know is that the p stands for prime and sp could stand for super prime or special prime something along those lines we really have no idea but essentially what this is is a prime version of a legendary commander so now now we officially have primes for legendaries and i'm going to be calling them super primes because it reminds me of super saiyan which i think is awesome although i do think it's a little bit weird right like like there were so many other vikings they could have picked like we talked about canute in my recent video like i, I don't know it just seems like you could have you could have just picked another viking you know what i mean like i don't i don't know man it seems like it could have just done that but anyway now really quick we're gonna go over the commander skills but one thing that we know for sure is that this is an infantry versatility and skill based commander now as you guys know this is not the logo for infantry this is a graphical bug and on other screenshots they do use the actual infantry logo so for sure this is definitely an infantry commander even though this logo is wrong it is correct at other points in their reveal so it must have just been a little bit of a bug here but anyway the active skill says it causes direct damage to up to three enemy troops within a fan-shaped area and the damage to each troop is reduced by 15 percent for each additional troop we see that all the time and causes the target's troop to receive continuous additional damage so i suspect how this is going to work is that the one target that you're fighting is going to take continuous damage over time whereas the other two commanders that you hit or other two armies that you hit are just going to take the regular aoe again we don't have the numbers here so who knows but it seems to be the case that this commander will be in a season of conquest so this damage factor here will probably be on par with other season of conquest commanders I suspect I mean if we look at what the sort of average range for AOE damages like for example we looked at Herman Prime he has 2000 damage factor to three targets and a debuff this is probably going to be in that same range unless they want to power creep him a little bit taking a look at the second skill it says the defense of infantry units is increased 
and the marching speed is increased when leading only infantry units the damage received from ordinary attacks is reduced so we're getting infantry defense infantry march speed and normal damage taken reduction it says ordinary attacks but then it goes on to specify basic attacks counter attacks heavy attacks all this other stuff this is heavy attacks is smite damage by the way so we know for sure that this is a normal damage taken reduction again we don't have the numbers uh it could be 20 percent defense 20 percent march speed it could be 30 percent defense 10 percent march speed uh normal damage taken reduction i mean we see this on other commanders it could be anywhere from 10 to 20 percent maybe a little bit higher very vanilla second skill very good stuff we we love to see march speed on infantry but the third skill is where things get really cool because this is a brand new mechanic that we've never seen before and it says when you are a field troop so when you're fighting in the open field when you perform a basic attack or are attacked by a basic attack there is a chance that you will take away the opponent's attack and march speed within a certain period of time so what this specifically means is and again we don't know the actual numbers here so it's hard to say but not only is this a chance to buff your attack and march speed but it will also reduce your enemy's attack and march speed by the same amount so for example let's say this is 20 percent and 20 percent right if this triggers either with your basic attack or when attack then you're gonna gain again let's say 20 percent attack 20 percent march speed and your enemy will then lose 20 percent attack and 20 percent march speed so it's kind of like a vampire effect where you're like stealing their buffs which i think is super cool i love this mechanic i hope we see more mechanics like this with other things um this is very cool and just to be clear it goes on to say during the duration the opponent's attributes are reduced and the attributes of your own troops are improved by the same amount okay so love to see this brand new mechanic for sp ragnar very cool stuff on the third skill moving on to the fourth skill it says when you are a field unit skill damage you receive is reduced and when the rage value is above a certain range the skill damage caused by your army will be increased for the next few seconds so I think we see this on um commanders like I think Suleiman has something like this uh where like there's some rage manipulation depending on how much rage you have uh, other commanders have something similar to this as well but that's the first one that came to mind for me um so yeah this is this is cool but only if it buffs your own active skill right uh because if like let's say it's above 70 percent um then you use an active skill and when you use your active skill your rage is reduced to zero so yeah but I mean it says for the next few seconds so I suspect that this will buff your active skill um maybe this might not be long enough to buff your secondary commander who knows we'll see how this actually works but one thing is for sure this is going to be sort of a tanky commander uh, they've got defense they've got march speed they're taking less skill damage and also it's going to be a skill damage based commander right we thought that infantry was moving away from skill damage and towards smite damage but this is a brand new season of conquest skill damage to infantry commander right so like that's it is what it is is this going to finally put Guan Yu on the bench like is this going to be the commander that puts Guan Yu on the bench that could very well be the case and then you would just run this commander with your CPO prime as secondary that that's probably the new commander pairing guys just so you know obviously it will depend on the numbers let's take a look at the expertise here there's really not much to say it says uh causes direct damage to three enemy units within the fan shaped area and causes the hit unit to receive continuous damage so basically um there's nothing additional here this is just going to make your active skill stronger okay um so that's what the expertise is over here so that is everything that we know about the skills and talent trees for sp ragnar but that's not where things end because when he was revealed sp ragnar was revealed as part of the key story now as you guys know as part of my coverage of the sixth anniversary live stream i talked about the new key story coming that's going to be between the vikings and the anglo-saxons and this special accessory or they're calling it a secret accessory the thunder god belt says when sp ragnar wears this equipment all of his skills will be converted to be effective for all armies only effective when the commander is the deputy commander of the army I'm pretty sure now I don't know if this means primary or secondary I would say from the perspective of like lore and making it make sense within the context of the KBK it would make sense that you would have to be the primary for this to work but I mean deputy typically means secondary commander so I don't know maybe there's some weird translation going on here but the point is when you have this secret accessory the Thunder God belt if you equip it to SP Ragnar then his skills become every troop type okay let me say that again when you have this special accessory then what it does is it converts all of these stats 
to whatever army or whatever troops you have so for example if you have that belt equipped to him and you pair him with let's say nevsky then this sp ragnar all of his skills are now cavalry units okay uh very cool stuff here it makes this commander extremely versatile but only within the context of this specific kbk okay uh and it says down here that this only works in the lost kingdom and you know lost kingdom canyon and things like that okay and honor duel which honor duel is uh, and this was covered by ihara it seems like honor duel is going to be similar to sunset canyon but 3v3 um ihara goes more into depth so if you want to know more about honor duels as a game mode you can watch their video down below but i love the idea of an accessory that makes a commander more versatile right because that's one of the things that sucks about commanders when they get power crept out of the game is like what do we do with them now right like that's kind of unfortunate and also this makes it very free to play friendly because you can invest in this commander and know that okay well let's say you don't have a good infantry pairing for them right now or maybe you did but then a new infantry commander comes out and then this commander would now take the bench but because of this accessory well you don't have to put them on the bench now now you could pair them with an archer commander or something like that right um versatile legendaries that you can invest in and feel good about for a long time is awesome and so here we can see once again wearing script exclusive accessories will make all skills effective for all armies it says arms it's troop type that's what they mean but this really raises the question as to how are we going to get sp ragnar right because what we know from this reveal is that this commander will be usable in all game modes so it's not like this is going to be a kvk exclusive commander you will have access to the commander at all times what makes him special is that when he does have this kvk exclusive accessory he will be more powerful and more versatile in that kvk okay so he's kind of like a hybrid between a regular legendary and a kvk specific legendary right he's not specifically for this new key story you can use him anywhere but if you use him in that key story with the accessory you can use him for any troop type which i think is super super cool but how are we going to get our hands on this commander right that's the part that makes me very confused and you know recently i made a video talking about how like it would make a lot of sense for this commander to come to the expedition right they recently revamped the expedition map they recently fixed some bugs with the way that commander skills are shown in expedition on the map like they've put a little bit of focus on expedition recently and you know it would just make the most sense that you know th this would be the time if ever that they were going to add a new legendary to the expedition um as far as i know they did not reveal how you will get your hands on this commander it's probably now that i see this commander and i understand what their what their point is like this is really like focused around a kvk um i don't think it's going to come to expedition guys that i don't know something about it just tells me something tells me that it's 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 going to be more focused on this kvk i don't know if it's going to come around as part of an event for the launch of this new key story maybe that will be the case i don't really know really deep down i want them to add this to expedition right because a versatile legendary commander like ragnar sp or special prime ragnar um because they're versatile for all troop types and they have aoe and they have march speed like there's so much to love about what this commander's kit is again it depends on the numbers right if all these numbers are low then maybe it's not that great but like such a versatile commander you know it would go a long way to have such a versatile commander available to everybody for free and i would really love to see that um however you know because this is a key story and because expedition only lets you get three sculptures per day then you nobody would have this commander expertise by the time the new key story comes out right it, it, that's just it is what it is unless you can also use universals on them right that could be the case as well where like it's the opposite of ethel fled where ethel fled you have to get three per day and you can't use universals maybe for him you would get three per day but you can use universals if you want to speed it up i don't know i have no idea um but you know i'm starting to doubt him being part of expedition if i'm being 100 honest with you guys but let me know what you think about special prime ragnar or sp ragnar in the comments below i would love to hear what you guys think now really quick i guess we'll cover you know they did reveal that the new key story has four different factions to pick from originally i thought it was only going to be two the anglo-saxons and the vikings but it looks like the anglo-saxons are divided up into two different camps 
and the Vikings are divided up into two different camps. Uh, Ihara goes more into detail about all the buffs here, but one of them gives you March speed for infantry and uh, rallied damage. This Anglo-Saxon one gives you Archer March speed and uh, reducing the damage of your garrisons. This one looks like it gives you 3% damage for archers and field troops. There's also a fourth one that was shown in the video that I didn't screen capture. But again, if you want more information about all these different factions, I would say watch Ihara's video. The other thing that they mentioned here is a vacation voucher. So I don't know if this is only going to come to the Chinese version or if this is also going to come to the international version. But basically what this says is that um, the king can issue a vacation voucher to players that are not good. They, if they know that they're not going to be able to play for a certain amount of time, the king can issue a vacation voucher to one of these players and they won't be part of the kingdom calculation for matchmaking and things like that they can still log into the game and claim their rewards and all that other stuff but they just can't participate in like lost kingdom activities and things like that okay so um i think this is good i hope this comes to the international version because i know that this is a big deal for some players people have been asking for something like this truthfully i, I don't think this really matters honestly i i don't care right i think this is really for imperiums that's really who this is for i think but i think in the grand scheme of things i don't really care about this but i know some players do want it so I think that's that's a good thing but yeah that was pretty much uh, everything that I wanted to cover in today's video again if you want more information about like the the new game mode and and key story and everything like that watch Ihara's video down below I just wanted to cover today new SP Ragnar special prime Ragnar super prime Ragnar whatever you want to call it for some reason they decided to go with Ragnar again even though we have other commanders like Canute that could have come into the game. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Do you think this commander is going to be really good? Are you happy with how this commander's mechanics seem to be working? Let me know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, drop a thumbs up on the video. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kings players might see it. And consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload another Rise of Kings video and for breaking news. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omni York. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.